went back home. Praise God. And when he started looking around, you know, yeah, trying to take his clothes off, trying to take his chapels off, you know what he saw? Hallelujah. His almost had the skin colored chapel that he was wearing in the morning was now dark brown. He looked around to see what was wrong. Where did I step in the dirt? Where was the mud Hallelujah, uh, that was sticking to the chapel coming from? He started looking around. And suddenly he found blood stained footprints all over the house. He was astounded, really, really astounded, and he started looking, where is the blood coming from? And suddenly, he saw it was coming from his own foot. He looked at it this way, and found the nail sticking there. He pulled it out, and to his shock, you need to understand, he found that the nail was something like two inches long. Hallelujah. It was stuck inside. Amen. Praise God. He was taken to the SUV hospital at part of the year. Praise God. And after almost had a two months of treatment there, the man died. Hallelujah. I know he's in a happier place now, but I need you to understand he died. Hallelujah. There was a one to which day that was stuck in his foot. But then I think of the story. Or this actually happening. Had that happened a few years ago. I am reminded of the many moments in which people like us, you know, we find thorns, you know, sticking into our feet. Sometimes, for the, hallelujah, uh, more unfortunate among us, hallelujah, we have nails also sticking into our feet. But you know why we escape death? We escape so much of pain and hallelujah, you know, how to get out of these situations. I believe it is basically because we have the ability to feel pain. Praise God. And when pain comes away, we look to see what is wrong. And we correct that situation. We pull the nail out. We pull the thorn out. What went wrong in the Tachan's you know, life? He couldn't feel pain. And when he had a killer nail inside of his foot, and he just simply couldn't understand that there was something wrong there. Hello, why? Because he could not feel pain. So let me start thinking this way, my friend. We will come to understand that pain is not actually a bad thing. It is actually a messenger, an angel sent from God to tell us something needs to change. Hallelujah. There is a repair work that you need to get done in your life. It's a message, message from God himself. And we need to understand, when we just simply live life the way we want to, praise God, and suddenly pain hits us, failure comes away, praise God. God is actually trying to intervene and tell us, hallelujah, that He is looking for something to be changed in our life. Praise God. If we disregard the pain, if we deny the existence of pain, if we just think it will go away in a matter of, you know, maybe a few days, maybe a few months, Hallelujah. I want to tell you, you're not actually disregarding pain, you're disregarding a message from God Himself. And that has the potential to destroy your life completely in the days to come. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So my friend, hallelujah, praise God. Whenever pain hits you, whenever you find the hallelujah, failure coming your way, you need to understand it is time for us to change something. Praise God. Many people, hallelujah, they do not understand what to do in times like that. Hallelujah. Let me point to you, point your attention to you know, a biblical example. When we look through the book of Joshua in the Bible, you know, when we look through chapter 6, 7, 8, we find the walls of Jericho coming, tumbling down in Joshua 6. What happens next? After this huge victory is you know, won, praise God. The children of Israel are faced with a little city called Ai. They've got to win a victory there also. It's so small and its population is so small that Israel think we do not need a whole army to win a victory here. They go with just 3,000 people. Praise God. After 3 million, just 3,000 go forward. But you know what happens? In the battle, which would surely have been won by Israel, they face huge defeat. They got to run from the battlefield. What happens next? That is the thing I want to bring your attention to. When they face defeat in a battle that they should have surely won, hallelujah, Joshua, who was in leadership at that time, understood that is a problem. That is a problem. If God was for us, 
nothing should have gone against us. Hallelujah. Who can stand against us? That was the question Jojo was asking in himself. And at that moment, when they faced defeat in a battle, then they, they, they should have surely won. Hallelujah. You know what Joshua does? He brings himself before the presence of God with fasting and prayer. And he starts asking God, inquiring of him, God, tell me, why did this defeat come my way? What is wrong? He prayed a prayer. He started praying in the morning. Praise God. And then even was said, maybe God didn't speak anything. Praise God. And this is what many of us also face in times of trouble. We go to God. We do go to God. We ask Him, God, what is wrong? Amen. What is wrong, God? Amen. Hallelujah. God is quiet and we think there is nothing wrong. But you know what Joshua did? Hallelujah. He didn't just say Amen. And not hearing God, he didn't just get up and go. He pursued the issue. He understood based on the revelations that God had given him given him from the word of God. He understood, if God be for me, nothing and nobody can stand against me. Hallelujah. I, this is a battle I should have won. And if I face defeat, that means there is something wrong. He pursued the matter. And come evening, God started ministering to him. God told him, Joshua, you know what is wrong? There is an archon in your halibut. Halibut. This Asian is the source of your trouble. He's done something contrary to my will, to my word, and that is the reason why I let the whole congregation of Israel have to suffer failure in this battle. Set the mantle right, and I'll be one more time with you, fighting your battles for you. You should did just that. He made the necessary changes. He, you know, killed Achan. And in the end, had a, they have this great promise from God that God told them, go one more time into the battlefield. You shall have victory and all the good of the eye shall be given into your hands. I'm quoting from Joshua 8. Joshua 6, 7 and 8. It's so one great lesson you need to learn from them. Praise God. So my friend, had a, whenever had a pain comes your way, Praise God. Whenever failure hits you in a battle that you should have surely won, understand this is God trying to tell you there is something not wrong. You need to change. There is something new you need to do. Hallelujah. There is something new you need to do. Why? Why many people ask God? Why should I change your God? God would just say, Hallelujah. If you keep doing the old thing, you'll receive the same old experience. To receive something new, you got to do something new. How many of you understand this? First, how do you need to understand? Now here's another thing. Here's another thing. As I said earlier, many other people around me that I see who are suffering, who've got pain, who've got trouble, who've got failure. They struggle to make both ends meet in their life. They do not know what to do. How do they just cannot seem to go forward? Many other people that. But when people get into trouble like that, when they suffer failure, they are in pain, the reactions of different people are oftentimes different. Some people I'm astounded to see, and you know, this is something that I fail to understand totally. Praise God. Many other people who actually in times of pain and trouble say, Oh, this is my fate. This is, my fate. This is what God has kept ready for me. They just compromise, they just adjust. And they just try to get to buy with what they are going through. And when I talk about such people, I want to ask you one question. Are you one of that? What would you do in your time of trouble? What would you do if you're struggling to make both ends meet? What would you do if at all pain hit you? Maybe you won't disregard that, but would you just you know, say, This is my fate. I'm going to put up with this. This is what God has for me. I want to tell you a few things that would actually be very necessary for you to understand. First thing is that you understand the will of God for your life properly. You know what God's word says when we read through the epistles written by Peter? The apostle says this way, 
you are called by God, number one, to come out of darkness into this marvelous light. Have you read this? Hallelujah. You are called by God to come out of darkness, meaning your life of sin, into His marvelous light. In the same episode, Peter writes again, once you come out of darkness into His marvelous light, you are now called to inherit a blessing from God. You are called to enjoy the blessing. That's your calling, to enjoy the blessing. God is a God who delights in the prosperity of His servants, not in their, you know, hallelujah, persecution. Not in what they suffer. God delights in the prosperity of His servants, His children. And one of the greatest examples of people being blessed by God, I believe, will be found in the account of the life of a man named Abraham that is found in Genesis 12 onwards. 